Hi. Uh, today we've got um, Jay Prakash uh, from uh, California, who is a founder of iCompass. Uh, he's got 16 plus years of IT experience, having played uh, various product management, product uh, development kind of roles all along his career. And currently he's the CEO of iCompass, a security company that uh, is creating products for compliance and regulatory needs of the market. Uh, so he's got a master's uh, from uh, the University of uh, New York in computer science, and he's based out of Santa Clara in the US. So we'll talk to him today on his uh, rich journey on uh, how he chanced upon starting uh, his own company and what has taken him uh, uh, so long uh, in various product development roles and how is he putting all of that to good use in his current role uh, in his uh, new initiative where he's the founder and CEO of iCompass. So welcome uh, JR uh, to the series. Uh, please walk us through uh, your uh, journey on how it has been uh, over the years, uh, what are the different kind of roles that you played. Uh, you had uh, leadership roles in uh, one of a uh, few companies uh, like Equifax, uh, where you're VP of development and you know, all of that currently. Uh, what prompted you to you know, come up with this uh, role that uh, you know, you, uh, you had this inclination to start off on your own. Uh, so it'll be interesting to walk us through that journey. Please walk us through that. Sure, Thank you, Kiran. Thank you for the introduction. So, again, as, as you mentioned, my background is in engineering and I've been building products uh, for the past 15 to 16 years. And uh, in the last year, I've been, uh, again, focused on my company uh, called iCompass. It's a infrastructure compliance as a service. So uh, just to get to your question about why did I start this company and you know what problems are we trying to solve? Uh, it was out of my own frustration of, you know, needing to do compliance and audit of uh, the platforms that I was building. In uh, I, I was managing three platforms uh, in various countries, and I had to, every uh, six months to a year, uh, initiate a process of audit and uh, initiate a process of evidence generations and uh, generation and discovery. And all of this uh, seemed uh, very tedious, it needed a lot of manpower and we needed to put in a lot of time and effort to get this ball rolling, especially because uh, we lack the right uh, subject matter experts or sometimes uh, the lack of automation uh, in various pieces of your infrastructure. All of those things were kind of making it a very uh, long and tedious process. And, and I was just looking for something, especially on cloud uh, because uh, our, some of the platforms are on cloud. And we, I was looking for uh, any good tool that I could use and actually kind of make progress on these uh, particular topics. Mainly you wanted to do SOC 2, PCI compliance and uh, go, so on. And what I realized was uh, there was not uh, a tool available which was affordable and also that uh, was actually kind of geared towards the new way of doing things, you know, with the infrastructure as code and, you know, uh, all the DevOps and SecOps practices that are, you know, in work nowadays. It, it was hard to find a tool uh, that was meant for this step of uh, 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 problem solving. So uh, at the end of the day, then then I look, looked around, I saw that uh, no one was doing a good enough job and I felt uh, the the pricing uh, seemed way too much, and I knew that this was a really good opportunity to actually solve the problem and hope that I can actually provide this enterprise grade solution to smaller companies who can't afford to hire you know specialized people and and actually make it you know uh, uh, make it kind of easily. Uh, uh, launch it easily in their in their engineering processes so and i believe that we could have done it and that's how i actually uh, i talked to my co-founder mike zazon and we we definitely felt this was a, a right moment to get in and uh, about a year and three months ago uh, we pulled the trigger and i i joined the company full time and uh, i've been running it ever since okay that's great uh, so, what do you think are the challenges today in terms of uh, you know the security landscape of companies with DevSecOps being thrown in, 
and uh, it is rated which code is being churned out the security needs to yes. keep in pace with uh, the regulations with the compliance needs and you know all of that the vulnerabilities and every day you have something new that come that keeps coming Correct. up on the landscape so how do you think uh, a ciso or a decision maker should ensure uh, he gets a good night's sleep uh, you know uh, with compliance and regulatory requirements because i remember uh, way back in the day when i used to work uh, the head of engineering used to say i mean we are now selling to the us market and uh, we're going to have um, uh, sleepless nights because you can get sued uh, if there is a breach or compliance uh, and your product mm-hmm. doesn't comply to those so what do you think uh, you know ceos and decision makers should be doing actually to stay on top of the game so it can seem very daunting it might seem that you have to do a lot of things and yes there are a pro- putting processes in place and uh, using the right kind of tools and all of those things will always be uh, seem like a, a task that can take a while or maybe uh, it, it will be very hard for you to implement it is not always the case i think there are a lot of low hanging fruits uh, you can actually implement a simple like zero trust security type you know uh, um, frameworks and processes uh, and those are not that hard to implement and then uh, using tools again which do the automation for you rather than you know you trying to doing that for yourself that's always going to take more time and i think even if it's a short term solution i think bringing on that type of uh, outside the box thinking and making sure that you can you know uh, implement or at least uh, onboard a tool that's going to solve certain problems for you i think if you go in that direction and and try to uh, have uh, the culture change that you need to have because as you mentioned A, a a small data breach can basically shut down the whole bank of the whole company because uh, the the amount of uh, again uh, money that you have to pay the regulators and not only that and the you lose the trust of your customer and you definitely don't want to do that i think in, no company is going in thinking you know i i, I want to have a bad day and, and i think it is uh, it, eventually it's a competing of your bandwidth Uh, most of the time your engineering bandwidth is always uh, seems like you are uh, kind of pushing it along okay i need to do the operations work or i need to do sec- security work or i need to do product work and typically the product and business things wins out a lot more than because if you are not making money and if you are not keeping your customers happy then you know operations and security will not come into picture so uh, typically that's kind of where uh, the ceos and ctos are going to find it challenging but uh, what we know for sure is uh, you don't have to rely on a overhaul for you know a complete overhaul of your processes from get go i think you can implement few things that can actually start off your security journey and then you know slowly kind of uh, really try to think about from each perspective as and then zero trust is a great way of thinking because you know you don't trust the device that is connecting to your network you know in, in, implicitly it is very explicit and that's how you need to think about all kinds of things you know you always think that you might already have a breach if that is the case how do you quickly find it i think the problem is not about having the breach but are you actually finding it in time so that damage is not being done because no yeah. one is going to download all your data in one day this actually happens over a period of time and that's why it's important to kind of have the right processes and have the right tools in place so you can catch it and and actually resolve it and that's if you have that mentality that it is not a question of uh, like you know if it's a question of when then you will be uh, better in a better place uh, to resolve the issue okay yeah and uh, i think that brings me to the next question which you said that product team should focus on the product development aspect and the business side of it apart and security is a new angle that's being thrown in that uh, has made uh, the right shift movement more popular these days uh, this right. is like you're shifting uh, security to a day one concern and integrating it Correct. all the other things in the security life cycle part of the process of, yeah. uh, making it the last mile of delivery you know earlier it used to be performance Correct. and security where like once you finish the product development then it's you start right. the security aspect so now you are like yeah. right shifting the whole thing uh, yeah. from the beginning so how does uh, Uh, you know the i compass tool integrate uh, the life cycle of uh, the product development stages can you walk us uh, through that i think that'll uh, be a good uh, exercise as well yeah 
definitely so uh, there are a couple of ways you can use our tool i mean one aspect uh, one way you could do it is like you already have the product in place and let's say you're trying to catch up and this this happens a lot and this is not a uh, bad uh, at all but you uh, what we do is we have an onboarding process is very simple and straightforward and uh, you can do it within uh, you can actually start getting results within 10 minutes of you know going through the onboarding process it's all automated it's just button clicks nothing that you have to code uh, so that's kind of you know it makes yeah. it easy uh, and also um uh, that's uh, let's say if you already have it but if you don't have it we actually you don't have the infrastructure ready or at least you're in the process of building it uh, we have you know aws best practices especially uh, uh, in, in terms of what how many accounts should you have and you know how do you uh, set up the accounts so that you know what kind of data uh, let's say if you have a production account versus a, a non production account and how do you manage and you know and there are other things that you need to be doing uh, there are several best practices that we actually have automated so you can follow the steps and get that done in in any stages which is you have not launched yet or you have launched so you can find these gaps and start doing it or if you are in the day one mindset then that's great and you can also use it in that way so we we provide again uh, our our whole point of view is how can we make it easy for companies to uh, do security and we have knowledge base uh, links as well and so so you can go there and uh, follow the steps but mainly we want to make it a uh, very simple easy clear to see uh, what's going on with your infrastructure and overall setup so you can actually see all the resources that are in respect of which region they are in because you know you, you typically won't go to each region and check if there are resources there because you have to go to each tab that's not a uh, i would say like a exercise that anyone does so our tool will do that for you so we uh, you know get all of the data from all different regions from for all different services and we collate it in one place so you can actually have a overall idea of what's going on in your infrastructure as well as you know wherever the issues are and gaps are from a security standpoint we help you enforce those best practices uh, through our you know aws uh, best practice as well as we have a security module so practice. you have something like a quick uh, cookbook or a recipe sort of a stuff like you know the based on a use case okay this is what happens then this is the remedial action and uh, this is what you need to do to uh, plug it uh, is is that something like that exactly so what we do with our like remedial they call pages. it a playbook or something yeah exactly yeah, yeah. They're, they're, these are security cookbooks or playbooks you can say yeah. uh, where you you see you know what to do basically uh, not all problems are solvable in that way but we do give you like this could be one way of doing it at least we give you one or two ways of how to solve that problem and yes so we we, we give you step by step so it's you know at least what to do uh, when you have the chance yeah okay how do you handle this uh, question of you know when multi tenancy is there and uh, like since i compass also deploys on the cloud uh, there could be various uh, Uh, you know scenarios wherein uh, you've got uh, hosted managed solutions and you've got other third party software also in play in the ecosystem so how do you intertwine with those solutions and ensure that uh, security is uh, you know taken care of because uh, one good thing is when it's stand alone it's a lot easier but now if it's uh, in the cloud then uh, obviously you need to be compliant to as i said the aws or the google stack that you're catering to so how do you and how does how does the game change uh, when you move things into the cloud right so there definitely a lot of benefits of being in cloud because the, it's a shared responsibility model from a security Absolutely. standpoint i mean yeah yeah there's no so denying the, the fact that there's uh, the yeah. Uh, yeah the benefits because are definitely there <laughs> definitely right. yeah not only from a cost standpoint and other you know development areas it's always right. Right. there are always good things to say there but i would say from a security standpoint because it's a shared responsibility model there are going to be uh, tasks and things that you would have had to be responsible for at least you had to get all the evidence for uh, like the you know uh, uh, location security so you now like uh, how are you making sure that who's entering a uh, uh, server uh, in a farm uh, do they have the right credentials why they are there and all of that type of stuff um, those things are actually not your problem it's aws's problem for example or these google's problem so i think 
that actually reduces the amount of work that you have to do so there are like you know obviously these are infrastructure as service providers right so we're talking about aws or uh, gcp or you know uh, we have azure so these are the big ones and there are many oracle ibm everyone a lot of people have a lot of companies have their ias offerings but if you go a little bit higher if you go to platform as a service then you are even reducing some of these other aspects that are giving you the flexibility to do more uh, which means that you have less you know uh, uh, it, you, you need to kind of also take care of the security in these levels right so if you're doing platform as a service then it actually kind of even reduces even further for you the amount of work that you have to do but typically again talking about infrastructure as a service i would say uh how it changes the game is that just because you have more flexibility doesn't mean that you can rest easy <laughs> it just means that you have to acquire a different set of skills and different mindset of how you are going to spin up resources and you have to bring down resources that sort of thing the life cycle of it life cycle management of resources has to be thought through a differently now because you know as you mentioned if it was a a separate service it's your own server i think the way you were doing it would have been different versus in, in in cloud so that's why i would say cloud governance uh becomes a something of an issue that ceos and ctos have to think about every now and then and and uh, that's how i would say going from you know uh, on prem to cloud that's how you need to start thinking about from a leadership standpoint i think they will have to uh, change the way they actually uh, you know uh, uh hire people or or you know the processes have to be re, you know redone because the way they have done before they have to probably go through that and make sure that they are now in line with the new new ways of doing it. so i think those are the kind of things i would i would be uh, yeah recommending okay okay so you know, basically when you have these regulatory challenges what are the top who are the three challenges that you have encountered when you are trying to integrate your solution with a customer out there one is that as you said the governance not being in place and then access permissions because they are very finicky about allowing another product to enter their it landscapes and things like that. so what do you think would be the top three challenges that uh, you should be you know measuring security at the same time be non intrusive uh, into their environment and ensure that you are compliant to the landscapes requirements so what do you think are the challenges that you see when you're trying to integrate your solution in the target landscape of the different products and solutions that you try to integrate right so let's say if you're doing soc 2 compliance the other question would be uh, if yeah. if they you really got those challenges like are you also have an option of white labeling your product and then bundling it up with a target customer and then you know right. then it's up to him how he wants to uh, play it in his environment so yeah so i, I will exactly yeah yeah so that that's a interesting uh, interesting that you brought that up we do have a white label uh, offering actually so we offer it for uh, the service providers who are you know working with their customers and and uh, giving them operational support uh, and and you know manage their let's say cloud accounts so we do enable them to use our product to have them generate compliance reports uh, on a you know whatever frequency that they would like uh, and also uh, kind of keeping on top of things uh, in in terms of let's say if there is some changes that uh, shouldn't have happened or you know might not have happened in, as as you mentioned like access secure access changes right those type of changes we are always recording so the way our engine works the policy engine our compliance policy engine works is that it's scanning um, on a periodic basis and we see any changes that has occurred between the last scan we have done and the scan and we actually send out emails and we tell you this particular thing has changed and so as soon as those things come through you can actually take action based on or if it was an authorized change or not so you can actually keep on top of things uh, way e- more easily than it would have been uh, without a tool like us so just to kind of uh, come to uh, your initial question about like what would be uh, 
how are we helping our customers in, in short right uh, one thing is let's say if, if we have a customer who has a soc 2 compliance uh, you know need typically what happens is that if you're starting out and your company have never done it it is a long process of uh, learning you need to understand what is the expectation of this requirement and uh, as any compliance course it's always going to be somewhat process related and some of it is going to be technology or you know uh, related to your automation so these two things combined is how you are actually doing the compliance compliance and what we tend to do is we don't want you to just say okay use this tool and we are off we want to actually help you through the journey because what we have seen and and going through the journey ourselves and you know even in my previous roles what we have seen is that the lack of subject matter expertise or uh, the someone who has who's interpreting those legal language of the compliance into actionable technology technology you know either process or automation is where we would actually have a lot of uh, either debate or you know typically um, things would slow down in that realm and uh, we want to kind of help you help businesses scale that meaning especially for a young business which is starting out and they have no clue how to do this we help them through the process of not just the automation side but we also generate policy documents for them and we tell you hey these is the these are all the different processes that you have to enforce and this is how it looks like and this is the starting point for you and from here you can actually you know um uh start adding more nuance thing that you want to do uh, so at least you have a, a starting point a framework that is applicable and and that is going to be acceptable by an auditor go like from the get go and then you can always modify it to you know, meet your specific needs so that's how we are actually helping our customers uh, actually go through the journey and uh, that's again because we believe that this whole process itself uh, needs a kind of a engineering overhaul <laughs> in a way where we want to kind of make it more efficient and make it more clear uh, rather than just uh, something that you have to do because you know yes my customer needs it or you know it's a requirement at some point from some vendor so we you you want it to be more of a thing that uh, is part of your practices in engineering and business practices that's going to help you uh stay in the lane of like being secure and also doing the right thing for your customer okay okay and and uh, i could uh, see that you know as a part of your product uh, the security industry itself is growing at around uh, by 2021 22 i believe the enterprise security needs in the world is going to be around pegged at around 7.6 billion uh, in terms of the market worth and there's a huge shortage of security personal skills as you said uh, this yes. uh, you know you don't have auditors you don't have regulatory people you don't have skilled resources to do pen testers like pen testers is like like a data scientist job now <laughs> like if you are in pen yeah, testing right. then you are a very valuable candidate so i think your tool helps uh, roll all of these three things that is a regulatory guy a cloud architect and a security expert all into one Uh, right. so i think that will help elevate the, the needs of uh, the skill set so i think uh, so i think you need both of them in the market you need skilled people plus you need yes. a good set of tools to plug in this huge okay. gap that's going to come uh, so uh, you know what, what's your uh, uh, you know experience when it comes to security requirements how easy is it to find security personnel in the market Uh, because uh, my experience is uh, uh, way back in the day 5 6 years back it was very difficult to get good uh, uh, you know pen testers or threat modelers and you know those kind of people so what's Great. your uh, experience with that so uh, you're absolutely right i think it is really really difficult to find 5 uh, years ago and now it's even worse as you can imagine because the number of companies are growing right and each company if everyone wants the best of the best uh, you're obviously not going to have enough people you know uh, there who are uh, at the top of the game so what we believe in actually is uh, we are definitely not trying to replace anyone i don't think that's a misconception uh, i wanted to kind of you know address that clearly is that 
we actually want to empower the devops and secops teams because oh, yes yes yeah i i think they have a lot on their plate already so but you don't want to do boring stuff you don't want to do okay i need to now create a automation thing for this particular compliance policy i think and then if that changes or if that if something has evolved and you can do better you are not keeping up with it because that is not your day job that your day job is going and properly putting out fires or like you know making sure that things are actually running in the way that's supposed to be running enforcing some of those thing, policies so uh what we want to do is we want to make that boring or monotonous things uh take it out of your way and then put okay now you have clearly an understanding of what is wrong or at least you know what the status of your current system is then you can take steps of what you want to do next because there's always going to be so much if you want to like general road map of like you know operations teams and uh, sec options or they'll always have some things to do and i think this will just fit in as a tool that's helping them stay on top of things and you know uh, rather than you know behind and uh, that's one thing and uh, what we believe is that as we go we want to always try to use people's time efficiently right uh, rather than thinking that we need uh, another 100000 security professionals we actually probably need let's say 1000 security professionals but empowered with tools that are going to help them you know not just our tool but you know uh, example of a good tool would be cloudflare for example right like uh, i think that's an excellent tool for you know some zero day uh, sorry zero trust uh, related things or you can do you know firewall type of things so there's so many things you could do uh, using you know cloudflare and i'm a big fan of it and we use it uh, for i compass as well and and there are like you know uh, devops tools like uh, for for example uh, code shift which we use again uh, uh, to make it very easy for you to write uh, continuous integration continuous deployment type scripts so we can actually get things out to production in a way without uh, any interference or any manual changes to things so uh, and, and portship you know allows you to do it through writing basically docker files and you can actually write your script and automate all of those things through that so again these are the kind of things that you need to be doing in order of in injecting these type of tools and uh, into your processes so that you can actually be more efficient uh, with your time of your people so uh, the same thing you know really good if uh, good companies will do the same amount of work with 10 people that a a bad or like a slow sluggish company might need 1000 so it's easily you know the i mean if you look at amazon there are like people one person is probably running like several services and is under that one developer and it's not even a senior developer or anything you know that's the kind of you know efficiency that you want to get out of individuals and uh, we believe that i think uh, that is what we want to do because uh, the skill shortage is a problem i think that's a separate set of like you know you do need to train and make people kind of who are passionate about security to train and get them and and have the right skill set to uh, be in the market so that they can actually take these jobs and on the other hand we also want to make sure that people who are working in the industry need to get the right kind of tools so they are empowered to do the best possible thing in the in a most efficient way possible so. okay so what have been your challenges in terms of your startup journey itself in terms of the skill sets required uh, to get things going you know i think you're based out of the us you have an office in india so how do you manage um, you know to get uh, good developers uh, good people with product uh, mindset and architecture mindset do the right thing so how much of that has been a challenge uh, uh to in in terms of hiring so i think i'll just segue a little bit into uh, your sure. startup challenges as well so which might definitely be, uh, yeah. yeah yeah so again uh, doing startup is definitely uh, tough uh, it's uh, and one of the key things is you know having the right kind of personnel working for you who's going to actually do the work that is necessary uh i've been lucky i have uh, really good friends uh, who have worked with me over a period of time so actually uh, one of my friends joe who used to work you know for my team previously in my previous job he actually ended up working with me in this job and he's my head of engineering so 
and my as i mentioned before my partner mike zezon he's actually the cto he's a very very smart and uh, you know very good guy but that's the core big like high level team uh, we the way we hire we are doing some hiring in us and we also hire in india as you mentioned uh, and i can see there is a talent pool that is getting bigger which is also proficient in india uh, it's a, a gone other days when people think that uh, they well, you can find good developers only in europe and us i think nowadays uh, india is becoming a powerhouse of you know good talent uh, especially given that the advent of uh, react development and you know python development uh, those are not as you know heavy in terms of learning uh, as let's say java would have been or dot net would have been so uh, nowadays like we we are able to find so our strategy uh, currently has been uh, take them through a training program uh, as well as uh, we do a internship uh, we have a successful internship program where we have been able to find really good talent and that has been a, a way for us to kind of uh, get good people in and uh, gauge them if they are you know ready and you know they are uh, prepared to put in the work and you know and because startups and big companies are different you know in different ways because startups uh, they don't necessarily have like a 6 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock you know you go home type of a thing because a lot of times you require to put in a little bit extra effort every now and then and uh, i never force that obviously it's a choice uh, again that's a choice that the person joining the startup should make hey i'm joining a startup i do know that it's going to i'm going to be able to learn a lot uh, but also means that i might have to put in some extra time every now and then and uh, i think i'm looking for people who are passionate who want to do good work and you know uh, i think we are always looking from that lens and who who want to kind of contribute uh, to the cause of the company and uh, that's how we have been hiring so far so yeah it's been it's been uh, challenging but i do believe that there are there is enough talent pool and we should always give people chances uh, to prove themselves so that's how we and, and our internship program is a great way that we are able to do that uh, give people chances fantastic so <clears throat> how do you think um... you know since your product currently caters to a lot of standards like as you said soc 2 then um, the iso 27000 standards then uh, cloud security standards and all of that sort of stuff so how do you and gdpr uh, for instance hipaa for instance so how do you stay on top of the game with these standards so do you actually have uh, uh, you know relationship with the standard bodies so as and when there is a standard change you get notified about that and then you make the corresponding Uh, product change because uh, mm-hmm. if you own the standards it's a whole new ball game altogether but then being compliant right. to those uh, requires you to you know uh, be in touch with what's happening so how do you keep yourself abreast of the changes there what's the recommendation from your side right so the the way we keep up and and what we are hoping to do is like so that our customers don't have to worry about it because we will just keep uh, keep up with the changing standards we have have a good relationship with the auditors again you know we are in constant touch with auditors for various reasons our own you know compliance as well as you know uh, we are always kind of helping our customers like you know find good auditors and things like that so we we have good relationship there and we do have uh, uh, like memberships in um, like let's say for uh, aispca and you know we are always looking into that and making sure that you know there's always news coming through their you know uh, website so we we try to keep up with that you know changes there typically uh, there are not a lot of changes happening in these things let's say cis is one standard that changes pretty frequently i would say okay. compared to the other ones okay. uh, but uh, let's say for some something like hipaa or soc2 uh, things haven't changed in a while and you know typically the, the new versions of it will come you know over a period of time uh, cis is a little bit more you know i would say trying to keep up uh, especially what's going on in cloud side so uh, and obviously gdpr has been uh, so even though we don't uh, currently support it uh, we are working towards actually supporting that uh, we don't currently support gdpr pci and nist but we are working actually our, one of our team is working towards uh, getting that uh, going but mostly for the other ones 
they it takes it takes time anyways but we since we are in touch with the you know auditors as well as you know uh, in, in the on the websites where you know uh, these managing boards uh, we have newsletters and things that will help us you know that help us keep on top of it yeah okay and uh, next question uh, jay would be about uh, what are the kind of tech steps in the cloud that you st- support like i know for sure that you do aws and gcp i suppose uh, is azure also on your plate or um, uh, what are the uh, tech stacks that you currently support in the cloud we currently support aws and azure is actually the one that we're in beta phase right now uh, uh, we have started some work on the google cloud as well so we what we plan to do is we want to help again people trying to going going to uh, what we see happening in the landscape is that uh let's say google uh is pretty their service is really good and and they uh, there are uh, companies who like using their data lake related services uh, and they have again done really good work there they have made a lot of advancements there so people want to use that and then aws has been on the forefront for for the other set of services that they have been doing again they are the like front runners front in terms runners. of the market yeah. shares as well as they are the ones who started this whole race so and they had a head start before all these other companies started joining in so they are they definitely some of their you know services are top notch and they, they are doing you know pretty well there so what we see is we we foresee a world where companies are going to use both or maybe more you know three or four of them but typically what's going to stop them from doing that is the the headache or the you know the complexity of uh, managing cyber security for all different you know areas so this is where a tool like ours or any other tool for example which does what we are trying to do uh, is going to help companies stay on top and be a multi cloud kind of a uh, you know company and and i, I believe that uh, this lands landscape is going to get consolidated i don't think that, that obviously alibaba is going to be there because that's in china and you know it's going to be big there uh, i think aws is still going to be the market leader for a while no one can predict in too much far in the future but i think at least next out a uh, easily 3 to 5 years uh, it, they they'll still be the front runners we'll never know what will happen after that but i think you know uh, i i assume that there is going to be some consolidation so we we want to stick to the main ones and that's where we we don't have to pick the winners right so let them figure it out but eventually we want to be just helping our customers you know through the compliance journey through a cyber security you know journey and you know just give them uh, the right tools at yeah yeah i think that's a very good integration uh, uh, strategy you know that you go with the market uh, horses you don't need to really right. predict the winning horse <laughs> exactly. then the market right. takes care of it itself uh, yes. so that's um, really a good thing to have and um, what are your uh, uh, words for somebody who's planning a security journey you know, for their company what do you think they should actually be doing you know like from code, static code analysis to vulnerability analysis yes. Uh, these days keeping in touch with the dark web signatures and of course right. employing auditors and compliance regulatory people what do you think a medium size shop or a small medium business should do uh, to you know keep in touch with the security as you said the enterprise landscape is flooded with so many products some of them very expensive that you can't even look at them right. uh, so from that perspective what should a small medium business or a medium business should do to not get overwhelmed with the plethora of options out there right. and how should they be planning their cloud journey you know what do you think should be the steps that they should do i think obviously the key thing would be to start with uh, the right people doing the right roles so uh, having the right people in your company who's going to be thinking about because uh, the first step is never to go out and start finding a product it is to gain the right kind of knowledge and understanding so if you are going to be in aws or if you're going to be in gcp uh, oh, do you have the understanding like you know are we are you using it uh, in the right way uh, are you optimizing for you know those particular services i think that kind of mindset has to be there within the company first and uh, that is the starting point i think training 
training your personnel and uh, making it kind of you know pretty much a, a, a and, and kind of making sure that they give them the time because let's say if you say go train and you know do it within the next two weeks and you don't give them the time because they're slammed with work then right. obviously they won't be able to do that either so training would be important training and you know just keeping up with things uh, that would be the first step and the second step would be there is a lot of i mean most of these companies do offer a there's a lot to read from a, a cyber security standpoint and there is stuff available out there other than just the kind of you know the part that you know you need to train and stuff but there's a lot of information available already so you should first consume that and and try to kind of keep on top of that before you start understanding what is the problem i'm trying to solve so if it is a compliance and regulatory thing it's the business is going to let you know right away because typically these are kind of coming from business end or either legal or 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 your customers or vendors who's forcing you to take this route and say hey we need to get this uh, certification or attestation you're going to be driven from that so that will become priority automatically or if it is from an operations perspective uh, if you are you're the operations leader i think if you are trying to get things going it's important to uh, understand and and see what would be that need and then trying to solve that need through the right kind of tools and uh, and this is where i think um it, it, the, as we mentioned there are several tools available but uh, the generally the best ones allow you to use it for some time you know for free and you know and so you can actually get used play to it and see how how it works play around, yeah. play around, exactly play around with it so i think i would always recommend doing that for the, with any any tool that you want to take i think that's a, okay. a best way of uh, ensuring that you are uh, making the right decision so i think kind of step by step taking those kind of steps would be the best way you always want to trust people within your own team so you know everyone is going to try to sell you and and which is fine i think that's how things work yeah, but yeah. Uh, they cannot tell you what you need to focus on i think that as a business and as a as a company you need to discover and and that will happen only when you are well informed and then i think that's the best way to start that yeah. okay great yeah so some closing thoughts on this uh, so how many uh, beta customers uh, do you have currently uh, what's your roadmap for the next 6 months uh, one year uh, so uh, how how's it uh, how's the journey been sure. uh, like it's yeah. people, people in the us or you have um, customers in the in europe also so we we actually have some in the pipeline so we have a bunch of uh, we have a good number of uh, pilot and uh, paying customers uh, and uh, most of them are in us Uh, we have some in india actually and uh, and we do see india as a really good place to grow you know our business and and especially in this area uh, because i think because of so many product companies uh, have have started in india now and uh, europe has been uh, kind of tricky uh, we are figuring it out there because uh, we do have uh, some customers uh, uh, who are planning to join soon from there but the, since we have not launched the gdpr one yet uh, that's something that uh, you know the european customers are uh, paying a lot of interest in so we we are looking for that uh, our road map as you mentioned uh, we have going, we are going to be doing gdpr pci nist uh, compliances very soon we are going to be adding uh, we, we'll be adding um, gcp and azure as i mentioned uh, to support those infrastructures as well and after that we have uh, other areas that we have uh, actually kind of been seeing and uh, at least uh, we have been discovering through interactions with our customers that uh, we want to do which is a, a questionnaire feature for example that's actually coming very soon uh, we want to help uh, the cso's and you know uh, people in the security a uh, team who need to offer very often have to fill up questionnaires from uh, a bank or or some kind of vendors uh, that they either do it on a quarterly basis or a yearly basis uh, you know so at certain frequency they have to keep filling these forms 
and you know we we are actually going to make it automated in a way so they can actually you know uh, get um, get a handle on that without spending a lot of time on it because that is actually another what they have told us is uh, CISOs have told us it's a lot of time sink for them you know for yeah. their teams uh, of building that so so these are all the different kind of you know we see a lot of other areas uh, i think you mentioned this already but you know we have a penetration testing tool that we or the service that we offer uh, as well so uh, and and we have cost optimization tool that we are constantly improving uh, you know we have a ml um, you know component to that and and we are trying to you know train it and and make it more more and more effective so you know these are all the different things that are happening uh, you know basically it, it's going to be happening in the next few months and and year yeah. okay okay yeah i think that will be interesting to see the security assessment uh, questionnaire that you have because once you have a check box with a checklist that will make a lot of decisions easier for decision makers and make their life exactly. easy So I think one last question before we kind of wind up this. It was really an interesting conversation to have. We touched upon a lot of aspects of enterprise security these days and ISMS, in particular, for a lot of companies. Uh, so what is that? Uh, USS uh, board at the background. So are I, are you a Skyfi <laughs> fan or an Isaac Asimov kind of <laughs> enthusiast? Yeah, be behind that uh, picture there. I do I do love uh, as Isaac Asimov's books but okay. uh, I'm a Star Trek fan uh, this oh, is a okay. Star Trek uh, enterprise <laughs> blueprint okay. so uh, I found this online at some point like few years ago actually okay. and uh, I saw it and I like thought I had to have it because yeah. I, I love uh, I, I have always dreamed of actually building a spaceship in you know <laughs> yeah about earth at some point so it's again as as a kid that was a fantasy and and uh, and i used to watch a lot of star trek so when i saw this blueprint i i, I said like i have to have it so yeah oh, i'm a big sci-fi fan and especially star trek series is uh, especially the next generation series is something that i'm a big fan of yeah correct 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 because uh, that reminded me of my childhood and the comics you know used to have those Uh, colorful <laughs> versions of that <laughs> the flash so, gardens and uh, the yes. star trek world so yeah. thanks jay and um, yeah. all the best uh, on your journey so i think uh, we will touch base of course um, when you go uh, big mm-hmm. with a few more customers uh, up your sleeve and then uh, wishing you all the best and uh, we'll be in touch for sure and then i think it was a quite remarkable talk that we had we touched upon various aspects of enterprise security here is wishing you all the best again yeah it was great talking to you thanks thanks for the interview kiran